Hey, welcome to another Javier Mendez podcast. And uh, we're just coming off a crazy UFC weekend where uh, Armand Sarukian just demolished Benil Dariush, which kind of made, uh, you know, made, made Dana go, you know what, that might throw a wrench in the Oliveira fight. So what do you think about hearing that? This is, you probably didn't get to see it because you're on a different time zone. Or did you see the replay? I saw the replay and uh, it was very impressive. Um, and definitely because they've had history and uh, the fight was a, a very tough fight for Islam. Um, you would think that the, the UFC being the marketing machine that they are, that they're always looking for intri- you know, intriguing matchups. And, and, uh, but I, I, I think, honestly, there's too many people ahead of him. And I think like Justin Gagey, Charles are, are ahead of him. So I think that's, that's something that they can hold later. But I think, uh, honestly speaking, uh, who we're probably going to be looking at, I would imagine, would be Charles or Justin. And, you know, Armin would be later, but I think he's going to have to have one more fight. And not because he has to have one more fight, because probably by the time he, he comes around, he's, gonna want, he's not going to want to settle, settle and not do nothing. And, and uh, so that's what I think. But I, can, I, can, I can see his logic. I mean, doesn't mean you get the deal, though. And it doesn't mean that brings the eyeballs to the screen. I think that's what... Uh, Charles two versus Islam, but then you still get Gaethje and Gaethje's like not somebody you just hop over. If you haven't challenged a Gaethje, that kind of means something, right? Don't you agree? Yeah. Gaethje, Gaethje's earned that opportunity, bro. So it's kind of like whatever decision they're going to make, but I already know on Islam's part, he's not choosing the opponent. So it, it comes down to who the UFC is going to offer, who they work out the deal with, not who Islam chooses. Cause he's going to, whoever they say he's going to fight. What do you think that match looks like now? They were both grapple heavy. Now they're both punchers and kickers. I mean, they they both were both, but now they're both better at each one of those, you know, stylistically. They probably well, improved we'll, their hands yeah, and their feet. Yeah, we'll see. You know, we'll see. Islam is uh, the least hit uh, uh, lightweight uh, fighter. So so let's see what happens, you know. Uh, we'll see. I mean, it's too – for me, it's too early to discuss that one per se. I'd rather – uh, discuss more the individual that we're going to get, which will probably be Justin or, or Charles, you know, when that fight happens. Uh, there's nothing yet. There's nothing on the table as far as I know. And like I always say, you know, I don't like talking about anything until the UFC announces it. Then we can talk about it. So right now it's just so just baloney talk as far as I'm concerned, you know. Uh, yeah, we're just, we're just talking crap, basically. Well, people want to hear about it, whether we think it's silly or not. I know what you mean. You know, they're just like curious. Like, does that mean they're fighting now? Like, if they did, would they? I mean, that's all it means. Yeah. Well, you know, I get I get news all the time. You know, Umar, Umar's fighting in January. I go, he is. I go, so I'm calling. I go, because I don't know. And I'm going, Umar, I, you know, Habib is, and they go, no, coach. And I went, well, what the hell? And Islam too. They're saying, no, Islam's fighting in Canada. And I'm going, you know, these damn sites. That's why I don't like it. It's like they cause all this <laughs> buzz, and it's like, man, it's like he's not fighting in Canada. Not, they're you know, both fighting Connor. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, that, that's why I don't like it. That's why I say what I say, because I'm tired of fans contacting me and, and talking about a fight that, that's not out there. And it's only because some news media has created something that's not there. And I, I hate that fake news stuff. You know, that's why I always say until the UFC announces it, it's crap. And, I'm, and I mean it because it is crap. It really is yeah. until the UFC announces it's crap. It's just us talking about you know, uh, the old greats fighting the old greats, you know, and the, the fights will never happen, but it's nice to talk about it. But reality is reality until the UFC announces that there is no match. Batman versus Spider-Man. There we go. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what Now, Umar, gonna, now, is that official? Umar has a date now? I, I see that everywhere. I'm, I'm told uh, February 17th. Uh, that that yes, uh, that's what I told them, that. But I don't know. Does the UFC announce that? If they say yes, then yes. I don't know. I will be. I'll double check for you right now while we're on here. Yeah, yeah. Check. Then 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 I can talk. If if it isn't, then it isn't. Now that's... my shoulder's killing me because my arms trying to hold the phone. <laughs> and I know you. I know you guys are complaining because coach is always moving his head like this and he's going you know, <laughs> i'm gonna tune off because you're getting me sick and i don't blame you guys okay you well it says umar Nurmagomedov five days ago versus Corey sandhagen in the works for february 11th okay okay and then it's like uh that was that was uh that was five days ago and basically you know there you go <laughs> that means possible it's still it's still not super conclusive man 
You know? well, then we're not talking. We're not, why are we going to talk about something that we don't know? I don't know. I'm going to I'm going to double I'm going to double check on my other source. This is like yeah, crazy. I keep moving my phone. I don't know which is what. You know, <laughs> stupid <laughs> phone. And, and, and like I'm because I'm always on the road, right? And like you said, I don't have a tripod. So sorry, guys. I, I know it's pretty crap that that you know coaches like this. You know, <laughs> I I just have to see. Like you know, if you look up this fighter thing, it's like. Have they announced that Sure Dog usually is pretty conclusive as to when something's booked? They only go by the letter, right? So they don't they don't really they don't really tease. There's a lot of people talking. There's so much hearsay out there that sometimes people don't know what's really going on because guys are trying to extend their channel with a bunch of double talk. You yeah, know? I've seen I've seen Russian news sites put them on there, but I I'm I'm not gonna say unless unless the UFC announces it, man. It's to me, it's not real because we've been there before too, where where a fight's scheduled and then people thinking all oh, this and all of a sudden it's not on the UFC's agenda, so it doesn't happen. Fights don't happen, right? So I'm just trying to find I'm trying to find Umar, and that's uh, well, I mean, stuff shaking up. There's there's no there's nothing announced. There's nothing announced at all for for. Uh, for Islam, you guys are just sitting here kind of in limbo, but you did say you had, so you have to go back and train Umar for February, even though you may not, it may not be who we're just talking. I, about. Yeah. I don't, we don't, I don't know. I don't know. Cause you it's, know, you know what? It's not, it's not booked on here. I don't think. No, he's scheduled uh, to, to, to look to fight with between the first three months, you know, and I'm assuming cause I'm still in Dubai that January is <clears> out of the question. So, so Umar will fight February or March, you know, against who? Who knows? Maybe it's against everybody saying. I don't know 100% until it's announced. Because that's when the contracts are in. That's when the UFC says done. Even though, let's say one guy says, I'm fighting. And all of a sudden, he announces it. But the other guy hadn't signed. Then all of a sudden, before you know it, there's no fight. Because the other individual didn't come to an agreement with the UFC. You know, so and one jumped the gun. You know, I don't want to do that. You know, I, I, I got jacked up one time because I'm doing an interview. And, and the reporter... You know, so the UFC uh, press conference and the and reporter goes, so what do you think about this matchup? And I'm going, oh, OK. So then all of a sudden I get like, why is coach talking about a match? We don't even have that. I'm like, well, why the hell did that guy talk to me about something that your guys thing, you know? And I, I get I get what they're saying. So you know, <laughs> you're announcing fights and we need yeah. to get more views. Let's announce some crazy fights on our channel. Huh? Exactly. That don't exist. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, Tyson, Mike Tyson is fighting Bob Sapp tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to make that the headline of the podcast. No, I'm joking. <laughs> well, anyways, we got a couple of questions. Let me look at those real quick so I can let you get back to your evening here. Uh, I, those are the two big things I wanted to talk about. That shakes things up. We do have the, the, Colby, Co the Colby Covington fight coming up after – I'm skipping ahead one UFC, <clears throat> but that might have something to do with where Islam tries to go next too, as well, right? I mean, maybe it's possible. Must, it's welter yeah, definitely weight, possible. Right? I mean, anything's possible till the contracts are signed. Nothing is given. Nothing. nothing. Right. We've seen this too many times. That's why I like going with the UFC uh, 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 news. I don't like going on other people's news. I want the UFC official news. When I get that, then we'll talk. If not. You know, then I want to make sure, be very, very clear. This is not official. This is just crap talk. And I, and I mean it. I really do. Because, you know, sometimes we talk about things that will never happen, you know. So, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, I'm not trying to be an alarmist or, like, make something up. So, let's see. Um, Coach, how do you see resting day activities of Islam Makachev, like riding bikes and uh, horses in the mountains? Is it fine or dangerous for an athlete? That was a good question. Well, well, it's always dangerous. I mean, but he's not going to stop, you know, until he has a fight. He's, he's, uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, it's in the contract. He can't do any uh, dangerous type activity that could potentially, you know, take him out of the fight. So I, I don't seriously think he's going to break contract regulations and do stuff because Islam is a, he's a professional. He's going to be professional, but when he's not fighting, Hey, he's, he's, he needs to enjoy his life and that's his, way of enjoying it so you're not going to stop him cowboy cerrone was the same way he's the cowboy cerrone style of dagestan i guess right yeah yeah if you want to look at it that way 100 percent, you can look at it that way because cowboy was the same way it's like you're not going to tell me how to enjoy my life on my free time it, the cowboy always showed up to fight right 
Yeah, but he I think he did even more extreme stuff. I mean, he he's like, I see as I'm riding up the mountain, but I see like cowboy probably trying to jump three buses with alligators inside. Yeah, and- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm kind of exaggerating, but you know what I mean. Well, it's it's like funny because I talked to a fighter years ago and he was a world champion, and I'm not gonna drop names per se. And we said, let's go skiing, man. He goes, no, no, no. I got to protect the legs. Can't hurt my legs skiing. I got to fight. And I'm like, I was like, whoa. <laughs> that, you know, that's some people look at their protecting their investment that way, too. You know? that, that, was, that was me when I was kickboxing. And, I, you know, I went skiing for the second time in my life. And, and, and I, I got the hang of it. And then all of a sudden, I, I stopped. And they go, why'd you stop? You got the hang. I go, man, I can't be risking it. What if I get hurt? Then all of a sudden, I don't have a fight. And remember, I was fighting for peanuts. The most money I ever made was seven thousand dollars. So, so and you got to remember, if I'm taking it serious and I'm not enjoy, enjoying myself, well, think about these guys that make millions. What are they thinking? You know, they're obviously going to protect themselves. So that they're not going to do anything dangerous that can hurt them for the upcoming fights. If they're a true professional, they're not going to do it. Yeah, I mean, you're talking back in the '90s, so that was technically probably like. $21,000 based on dollars. I mean, it was just interesting to think of it like dollars today, what it's worth. Um, yeah. Let's see. I saw an interview with Umar a while ago, and he mentioned that working Habib's corner for his fight was Edson Barboza was frustrating because Habib didn't listen to you. <laughs> what was what was that one like? Do you remember anything like this? Uh course Habib doesn't listen a lot of the times but when he does listen he does exactly what he's supposed to do because you got to understand Habib was always oh he can't strike he can't this so he stands with these guys to show him he can so he doesn't go to father's plan which 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 was what I wanted to do always and you know but he wants to give fans an, a different variation of what he can do and he can and, and at the very end at the very end Habib was great at striking he was great at striking he just you know, no one will really get to see how great he was, you know, but the people that were in the gym watching him beat up people was just with just striking, just boxing, just kicking. He was beating people up. Then people realized what a what a great fighter and the greatest to me he was. I mean, you, ha- you had him training with a professional boxer from Mexico. Come on. Yeah, well, not only him, other people. He was just he was boxing, boxing with professionals. So, no, Habib, Habib became a totally different picture at the very end. But again, you know, uh, Umar, you know, Umar, you know, you know, it's, it's frustrating when you're in the corner and you see it. But for me, I wasn't frustrated because I, I, I knew as long as I knew Habib was was in control, I, w- I was fine. But I wanted him to always take the, the easier path of victory. Right. Well, it's it's like I remember like over at the gym with you and I'd see Habib rolling and he's watching the guys in the in the in the sparring and he goes, ah, good Mexican boxing, Mexican boxing. He loved Mexican boxing. And that must have a lot to do with you. I think is that the is that where that comes from? I don't know. I mean, I, I, to me, it's not Mexican boxing. When I learned from Walter Carvalho Pops, Carvalho, sorry, Pops. So he's he's Portuguese. So <laughs> I don't know. Portuguese from Hawaii. My, there my, you me- go. <laughs> my Mexican boxing came from Hawaii. It didn't come from Mexico. <laughs> I guess so. That's that's a good that's a good inversion there. Uh, thank you guys for the podcast, Coach. Two questions: uh, What's going on with Father's Plan merch? Are you selling any in Dubai or anything? Uh, we don't have Father's Plan merch yet. Uh, they're they're still working on the process for a Habib line type thing. So I'm pretty sure Father's Plan merch is in that category. But uh, that that has to be handled with delicate care because you know it's father and it's related habib. to habib yeah uh-huh. yeah and anything related to habib has to be muslim proof it's got to be un muslim proof otherwise it's a no-go it's a no-go habib is not gonna uh you know go against what his beliefs and and do something that's inappropriate to his beliefs so it's got to be planned properly and it's got to be done you know muslim proof basically otherwise it's it's it, it's not about money he's about has to be halal. I guess halal. that's what they say. Yeah, yeah the, hal- the halal clothing, if you want to call it, you know. Yeah. So that has to be. It's very, very important, uh, you know, because that's who he is. Um, what have you learned about yourself staying in Dubai these past couple of months? Uh, that I'm not a good businessman, and that I need to, and then, and I need to keep being here to to get to that level where I can compete with these high level business people. Uh, right now, <laughs> I can't compete with them whatsoever. I'm in the meetings with them. But I, I have really nothing to value to add other than 
uh, I'm a coach. <laughs> that's it. But these guys, these guys can run circles around me in business, and they do, you know. And uh, uh, what I learned is I, I'm a rookie, and I need to to be around the 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 main guys that know how to do business to learn from them. That makes sense. You're getting some good mentorship. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, I definitely am. Let's see. I'm looking through here to see if there's any more. Oh, that was in a different language. I couldn't even read that. Oh, how far do you see? Do you think Shamil Gaziev will go in the UFC? I did, I don't know who that is. Oh, that's you, that's horrible. That's horrible. I don't know who he is. Well, there's so many fighters. It's so hard, and people might like. But you met me yesterday. Yeah. Um, let's see. That 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 uh okay. Um nope, he lost. Kevin Gaslam did not win his last fight, poor guy. He was in and out of there. Um, so you get two you get two guys calling out calling out Islam now, two guys coming from behind. You get Armand and you have the god of war from France, the ex-special forces guy. Looks like they're trying they're to pick both their have to wait in line. They're going to have to wait in line because I'm telling you, it's 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 like I don't see Justin being sitting still for that, and I don't see you know Charles. I mean, they, they, I mean, come on, man. It's like I don't see how that's fair. You know, one of those guys has to get the fight. You know, or or they go Charles, then they go Justin, or they go Justin then Charles. You know, I don't know, but at least one of them has to get that next fight. I don't see how they can just leapfrog those guys. That that would be horrible. You know, and you got people horrible. like Fiziev in the middle. You got you got people like Justin Gaethje. No one's calling out Justin Gaethje. I mean, that's a scary proposition. And, you know, there's Charles and I, did, did Charles and Justin fight? I don't recall. You know, I, I, yes, yes, they did. If I remember correctly, they did, and Charles knocked him out. There you go. But Gaethje's gotten better since then. I've noticed. Yeah, that. he's he's fighting smarter. He's fighting. He's, he's like not fighting just like reckless fighting. hands down. He's like. Keeping distance. Well, no, he, he just, yeah, he just doesn't care. He's just the highlight reel, you know. But now he appears to be on the right track and how he should be fighting. And, and he, he's always impressive. He's always great to watch, you know. And uh, nah, we'll see. I don't know. Like, I don't know who we're going to fight. You know, I don't know yet. Till the contract's signed and it's announced in the UFC, you know, even though it's Charles, it's whatever, you know, it's Justin. You know, who knows? Maybe you're right. Maybe it is Armin. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't have a crystal ball. But I would think I would think that it's not him. And here we are talking about. I just talked about stuff I don't like. That here, here we're doing the same thing I said I shouldn't be talking about. Yeah, it's here. It's hearsay. Stuff. It's like what if? But it's okay. We try. We try to stay point. If there's not a lot of news, you gotta gotta go to the what ifs. I guess I don't know. <clears throat> we get caught up in the uh, old rigmarole there. So anything new coming out of your Gemini? Your guys fighting in the UFC? Not that I know of. Not that I know. Of. The only thing. Uh, we're waiting to see what the shakeup is going to be with the PFL, see how well they, they do their acquisition, whether they roll with it correctly or not. Uh, the one thing that I think is wrong is them trying to compare themselves to the UFC when, you know, at the present time, you know, that's, that's just, hey, stop, stop the comparison. Just do your Dana, job. Dana, create, Dana was pretty rough on create, that. Great, <laughs> interesting fights, you know, create interesting fights. Get the views, you know. Get the get the views. Get the eyeballs to the screen. Then, then, then you, you know, then you don't even have to talk. You don't have to talk because the the views do it for themselves. So, you know, what I do is when people when people beat me, you know, and and whatever business or whatever they've done to me in the past, I just get better. I don't I don't come back at them with ver with words 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 right. I come back with action. And and all I'm saying is stop talking. You know, you guys, they, they all talk. Oh, blah, blah, blah. The only person that didn't talk, Scott Coker. Yeah. Coker <clears throat> oh, you know, we're, we're, we're the, he didn't talk. He didn't talk like that. He was very professional. But, uh, you know, these other guys are doing things that, hey, you know, just you got great fighters within your own organization. Build them up. Build them up. There, there There's one thing that's kind of hard to take away something like a UFC to undercut them. Because this goes in business, too. I mean, you remember Xerox for their copiers, and you remember IBM for their computers, but both of them made copiers, and both of them made computers. But, you know, IBM was the first to market with their computer, and, you know, uh, Xerox was the first to market with their copier. And here's the thing. You don't remember who's number two. You don't remember the second man on the moon, as well as, I mean, there's hardly a secondary league that we're excited about 
in, in American football, that would be college football, which is exciting because they're like the gladiator tournament trying to get into the pros. So they're, you know, they're playing their ass off. But like with, uh, with, with, with fighting, you have so many other, so many other promotions and to say which one's the best of the best based on statistics. And, you know, Dana's saying was neither one of these have done any major pay-per-views. Neither one of these have done the numbers. So how can two of them put together, make any numbers, make any difference just because they have the fighters? Well, is it, is he making sense or not? He is. It's logical. It's logical. No, it's logical. It's very, he's just being logical. I mean, the way he, the delivery, I mean, the delivery is harsh. A little harsh. Yeah. Like, uh, well, yeah, yeah. Slap you down. But, you know, but right. then like, I, I'm just saying these other guys are doing a great job, but, but, you know, do a, continue doing a great job. Build your fighters. Let let the media do that for you. Let them do it for you. Yeah, it's, it, numbers are numbers, and you know the real numbers are the pay per views. And if you've been there first the longest, you know it's just like putting something well, out of business like that. It's pay per view. Pay per view is the killer. Pay per view is the killer for everybody. But also TV rights, bro. TV rights, world TV rights. You know, kill it there. I mean, hey, look, whatever the revenue comes in, you know, the revenue in the UFC is astronomical, astronomical, right? So I'm, I'm doing really good, really good with these, my viewing the, keep moving the camera and my words, right? You're I'm losing your touch on the English language in Dubai. You're learning yeah, too much yeah, of the local yeah. language. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing a great job. I can tell you that. I, I, I'm correcting myself. I'm going, oh my gosh. Great camera work. Great everything. I mean, yeah. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not a professional. That's for sure. Well, it's late at night, but it's okay. So any more fun outings you have planned while you're there in Dubai? Uh, yeah, there's every day, every day. I'm, I'm, you know, I mean people and, and uh, it's just very interesting, high powered position people. And then nor normal average, just great people. It's great people. There's just uh, Dubai is just uh, there's a melting pot. There's a melting pot. There's about 200, uh, uh, um, 200 ethnic uh, uh you know, uh, background people here, you know, nationalities, sorry, background people, <laughs> 200 nationalities are in Dubai, you know, and, and, and they, you know, it's like the total UAE, right. It's probably like, like nationals, right. Probably 1.1 million. And uh, the total population in the UAE is like 10 million something. So you got to figure there's only 1.1 something nationals. The rest are just, uh, you know, immigrants that have come here for a better life and created a better life, you know, in, you know, you see it. You know, a lot of it. I think a majority of it is Indian, Pakistani, and and maybe uh, uh, a Filipino. I think you know uh, th that's a big majority of them. But then there's so many other. You know, I said 200, so you can think about that. Everybody, <clears throat> nobody's left out of that one. <clears throat> almost nobody. You know, almost nobody. That's pretty cool. So you're at least you're there during the good weather. It's probably cold yeah. and yucky back, cold, cold and yucky yeah, back yeah, home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not the greatest at home, but it. Yeah, but hey, I love home too. You know, it's not like like, you know, I love it here, but I'm here to try to conduct some business opportunities, and you know, we're working. You know, I'm working. You know, I'm learning. You know, I'm learning. I'm not. I'm not by any means striking it great, but I'm not exactly not uh, making great business connections. I'm making some great business correct connections, incredible business connections. You know, and I'm meeting a lot of royal members. You know, that are great people. You know, and. I don't know. It's different over here. When you're over here, you meet the, the people here and you just love this country. You know, I, I look at this country as my country. I, you know, the U.S. is my country. This is my country. It's like my, you know, my second home here, you know, and the president here. I don't call I don't say your president. I say our president because that's how much I, I love this guy. He's, an, he's unbelievable. And I, I got him a, a gift that I'm going to be able to present to him. So that, that's that's a great honor. Again, I met him two times already. So I get to meet him again, and and uh, soon I don't. I hope I get to meet him. I might not. I mean, he's extremely busy, but but if I get to meet him again, that'd be another great honor. It's a different level. This isn't happening in San Jose. You know, Bill Gates isn't calling you over to Microsoft. And... No, no, no. no. <laughs> Facebook. We need a meeting no. with Javier, right? No. No. But 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 in all fairness, the president of UAE, he's like, in my opinion, he he's he's like Bill Gates 10.0. It's at such a higher level, you can't really compare the two. You can't, you can't, you can't. You could be not. a big fish in a pond and a, a big fish in the ocean, and there's a difference. Uh, this, 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 man, this man runs a country, and, and, he, and he's a great humanitarian, you know, and, uh, 
he does a great job and and and, and he's he's a really caring caring president you know so i say our president because i i actually love the guy i think he's fantastic you know and in the u.s you know i like trump you know and unfortunately you know we don't have trump now we have we have somebody else that you know i you know we just have somebody else yeah you know? i understand what you're saying so i i can uh definitely say this is a great podcast have and I hope uh, I always hate to interrupt you so late at night, but uh, this seems just before bed. I hope this makes you fall asleep. And yeah. thanks, for, thanks for coming on today. All right, man. Okay. All right.